Wake up, Shinigami. You're chugging bleach with the only podcast that unlocked your bunk eye. Welcome to Chugging Bleach, our Bleach Marathon podcast. I'm here with my co-hosts, uh, Dan Video Games from, from Gigaboots.com. <laughs> uh, I thought we watched Bleach, but last time I feel like we didn't. <laughs> Don't worry about last time. Okay. Uh, KZ Excellent from KZExcellent.com. Uh, hello. That's it. And Mr. Feels from Mr. Feels Wild Ride. Dot com. Hello. That's the tweet. <laughs> this week, we watched actual Bleach again instead of that movie. Thank God. Um, we watched episodes 21 through 25. Pretty exciting. Real Bleach content, unlike last time. Sorry about that, everyone. None of that artificial bleach flavoring. This is <laughs> Thank real God, bleach that filling. That was so painful. It was so. It was so nice to get back to act to actual Kino. <laughs> yeah. it, it's like when you go and you want to buy like some fucking frozen garlic bread or something, and then someone gives you the generic store brand that tastes like wood. <laughs> you end up going home with a bottle of garlic seasoning sauce. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> with a question mark at the end. <laughs> yes. Um, they but, can't actually call it sauce the way you can't call craft cheese isn't being able to be called cheese. Yes, it's garlic product. You know, I, <laughs> I don't have a lot of opinions on food and what you should and shouldn't eat, but I'm going to go ahead and say you probably shouldn't eat something that has a question mark at the end of the description. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get into these episode summaries, feel... Can you tell me about Patreon? Well, if you would like to get Chugging Bleach early, you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash gbpodcast. For as little as $5 a month, you get many benefits, such as early access to the show you're listening to right now, which I already said, early access to Mondo Cool, our Dragon Ball movie review podcast, cursed content club commentary tracks, we watch bad movies, you can hear us talk over them, cursed content by committee, our Patreon exclusive show, we watch bad movies you pick. You can wa- listen to us talk over them. Extended armchair dev pitches. We make up video games that don't exist but might be cool. In theory, usually we just make war crimes and other <laughs> benefits. That's patreon.com slash GB podcasts. Thank you, Phil. Now, Bob, Dan- you reminded me of my dream. Oh, yeah? Recently. Uh, when you when you threw it over to Feel for the Patreon bit, I had a dream in the past week that was uh, me hosting an episode of Mondo Cool, our Dragon Ball podcast, in which I did the same thing as you. I threw it to Feel for a Patreon bumper. It's like, and uh, Feel, tell us about uh, the Patreon benefits. And he went, no. <laughs> <laughs> we sat there in silence because we didn't know what to do, and I woke up, and it was like a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Three hours of dead silence. I'm like, my SD card's about to run out of space, but I don't want to say anything. <laughs> I don't know the Patreon plug. That's feels bit. I can't do it. All I could do is try to start Gamer Premonitions, and then he interrupts me to do the bit. <laughs> Didn't realize how dependent on feel I was this whole time. The backbone of this entire thing. Okay. <laughs> we need to talk about these episodes Dan, can you tell me about episode 21 and no other ones? No. Oh, well, I tried, everyone. <laughs> See you next time. I guess, yeah. I guess we'll just sit here until we're all dead. No, it's okay. I'll just go. Eh. Nobody knows. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, we got to get it out early. <laughs> Episode 21 takes place in the Soul <laughs> Society, where they're chased through the portal by some sort of purple goo that will eat them. And then <laughs> Yoroichi is like, don't use your spirit energy in here, that's bad. Because it'll detect it and it'll it'll eat you. And they're like, oh, mm. okay, so we can't fight it, we just have to keep running. So they keep running, and then, and then Ishida starts getting eaten by the purple goo, and Chad... Uh, rips him apart from it, like he rips the shirt in order to detach him. It's it's, it's his little cape. It's his dumb fucking cape. <laughs> yes, it's very uh, cool. And they keep he running. It himself. It's it's getting really close though. So Orohime, who mostly doesn't look like herself this episode, uses her powers <laughs> to protect them all 
from the purple goo. When they get outside of the portal, let's say just barely land and everything's fine, uh, Yoroichi uh, scolds her because he explains that if her, uh, if any of her fairy friends had come in contact with the purple goo, they would have all died. Don't <laughs> it was a very tense moment. Her poor eye. Oh, that's right. He uh, he just headbutt her fucking eye, and I was like, "That's a cat <laughs> thing to do. That's a really cat thing to do." Yeah, fucking, they're the size of plates. Those eyes. Ah, true. Especially this episode. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. I was dying. So where we arrive is uh, the Rukon dist- district, uh, which is where souls come to live when they first arrive in the Soul Society. It's kind of like. An old Japanese feudal village sort of thing. Very run down. Not super fancy. Um, and it has the largest populations of uh, population of souls in the soul, soul society. The place they're trying to get to is Seirete. Which is on the other side of a gate. Uh, right next to where they are in the Rukon district. So. Ichigo immediately picking up on this goes. Those buildings look different. I bet that's where Rukia is. <laughs> Starts running. He's for like, it. this is like a video game. <laughs> yeah, He's showing uh, protagonist is... kicked in. Yeah, <laughs> it, like the brain disease kicked in, and he became stupider for a minute. Yes. <laughs> So he starts charging for this uh, dip building that looks different. Turns out it is uh, a gate to Serete specifically. And some giant motherfucker uh, shows up. I'm looking for his name. I've heard it. I know it's too. in my I know it's in my notes. It's just buried Jidonba. in my There head. we go. Yeah, they, Jidonba. They, they hype him up like crazy. I forgot about this. Dude's huge. He has these cool hand axes. He starts out just using one. He's absolutely enormous. He is the gatekeeper. And he says, ah, oh, well, well, it's been a long time since anyone's tried to pass through the gates without a permit. Welcome to you, little man. <laughs> 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 but uh, apparently he was chosen from among the best warriors the Soul Society has. In my notes, I say the dude looks like a dipshit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Yoruichi says, uh, we need a strategy. And as soon as he says this, Chad and Orihime just start running up to Ichigo, freaking him the fuck out, because it's like, this isn't a strategy, what the hell are you two doing? And as they're about to get there, uh, the giant dude, G- Gidongo, you said? Gidonba. Gidonba. Dodonga. Okay. <laughs> Dodongo, uh, smashes the ground, Janemba. causing a Janemba crater that covers the periphery. <laughs> Wait, we still haven't gotten... We still haven't gotten to Janemba. I had to think no. for a moment what the release schedule was for <laughs> yeah, Mondo no, we have cool. not watched that Yeah, yet. we have not watched that yet. D- damn. Hot damn. These oh, anime podcasts just then. fucking keep going. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so he causes a crater. A crater. It cuts them off from uh, Orihime and Chad. So they're on the other side of a rock wall. Ishida screaming that you know Ichigo needs to calm the fuck down and not get in this fight. Uh, Chad and he may want to help. And Ichigo's like, no, guys, it's fine, whatever. Uh, I have to fight him alone. Then there's a monologue. I wrote no notes, so don't worry about it. Uh, okay. He does talk. There is a weird line about all oh. battles in the Soul Society are fought one-on-one. Uh, yes, I took a <laughs> note on that. I don't know where that is, but right now we're at Ichigo's monologue, and he goes... In all of the fighting that I did because I recovered from the, those injuries five days early, I fought every night with Urahara. I didn't learn a single thing from him about fighting, but in those long hours, I gained tremendous strength and stamina. Yeah, that, that killed me, where he just fought five days and nights with no break. Mm-hmm. Oh, what'd you learn from him? Nothing. Nothing. I'm just, I just got more HP. <laughs> yep. I just got ripped. I just specked into vitality. He's like Dan playing Untold Legend. Yeah. <laughs> it's like strength, strength, strength. I don't need anything else. Strength. Just keep going. Make it's, the sword bigger. It's like the stat table is me playing blackjack and I'm like, hit me. And the game's like, you have 19. <laughs> 21, hit me. <laughs> I need to be stronger. Um... Maybe I can hit 21 Blanco. Anyway, uh, so 
Jesus. The, 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 the Wikipedia has his height and weight on here. Okay. He's 32 feet tall and 2,000 yes. pounds. He looked it. Yes. Uh, he calls Ichigo a country bumpkin for being rude mm -hmm. and not thanking him for waiting to attack uh, throughout his monologue. Uh, then he attacks Ichigo, and Ichigo blocks his gigantic hand axe with uh, his sword. And then he goes... Isn't it rude to attack when your opponent isn't ready? And yeah, that was like Ichigo. What the fuck are you? Ta you literally just said it would have been fine for him to attack you whenever. Yes, <laughs> it made no sense. Then the giant want to own him. Okay, the giant's <laughs> like, "Hey, I'm going to show you my special technique: swinging an axe at you ten times." And he calls it the ten, ten strike festival. And he tries to count out ten strikes, and he loses track because he can't count. He's like, oh, I got so distracted that I lost One, count, but whatever. Two, nine. I've never, I've never had to count this high before. <laughs> yes, he said that too. It was really good. Uh, Ichigo's blocking all of them, and then it cuts to Chad, and Chad goes, and he's talking about Ichigo. He's go, he goes, he's going to be so powerful. It's scary. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I also fucking lost it there. I'm like, yeah, Dan's writing that one down. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a really it's a really good line. I should put it on my stream deck. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for any time oh, we do an really RPG. Should. Yes. <laughs> uh but then the huge guy, he he gets knocked back by Ichigo's like deflection of his uh ten strike festival. And uh, he decides he's had enough with this shit, so he pulls out another hand axe, and he flexes his arm armor off. He just busts it by flexing his arm. Very cool. It is very cool. He, he pulls those out, he starts talking a big game, and Ichigo immediately goes, Sorry, pal, but I'm gonna destroy your axes. And then Ichigo does that, GG easy. <laughs> <laughs> yup. Hardly an inconvenience. <laughs> Uh, this is actually where Ichigo knocks him off of, uh, in, off of his feet and onto his ass, and then the big dude starts bullshitting, and he's like, I didn't get knocked back, I just fell over. <laughs> what, did you think that was from you? No. <sighs> I just got tired. Uh, I didn't sleep very good last night, I needed to lay down. <laughs> I'm very sleepy. Uh, someone on their team said, uh, what was it? It appears Jidambo's mighty axes have been modified. And then he starts crying because he noticed his axes were broken by Ichigo's badassery. And then after he uh, stops sobbing, he goes, It's been 300 years since I've become the keeper of this gate. I, Jibdambo, hereby grant you passage. So he, like, flexes the fuck out and lifts up this gigantic gate. And as soon as he finishes doing this, he looks on the other side of the gate. And he stressed the fuck out. Because Hazaba for Blaze Blue comes up. <laughs> yeah, yes. it really is the yeah. He's there and he's about to say a slur. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of shameful how many things uh, were stolen. Bleach or Blaze Blue stole directly from Bleach. I know. As we go through <laughs> all of these <laughs> dudes, I'm like, oh, hell. what a good, so what a good many. place to steal things from. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 a lot to deal with because i love blaze blue and coming backwards to this i'm like oh my god <laughs> you, you understand yeah uh so this guy's name isn't hazava it's actually uh Gein, uh the captain of squad three uh the giant dude's frozen in place just seeing him and uh, I think we get yeah it segues into it segues into the next episode and then we get an outro and I wrote this outro is so good I never want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's about to leave soon. I know. That's fine. As long as we don't go back. Yeah, we can't go back. <laughs> like, yeah, we're just going to use the old one again. <laughs> <sighs> so we get our cone segment at the end, like we do, where he's going to introduce yep. a bunch of the different captains in the soul, uh, the soul Society, right? So he goes... Squad 2, Captain Soy Phone. Is she really a ghost? Who knows? <laughs> this is the most insane one. I lost it. It's like, what the fuck kind of sentence is... <laughs> That's like me playing Dynasty Warriors when that one lady general on the opposite team kept despawning. <laughs> that would be a reason to sit there and be like, is she a ghost? Who knows? <laughs> 
is fucking ridiculous. But yeah, that's the end of episode 21. I think that was a fairly strong episode. Yeah. Moving into 22. Jidambo is immediately super owned by Gin Ichimaru, who uses, like, what was it? There's a line in here. Uh, Yoru Ichi goes, you can't fight him. What are you doing? And then Gin talking to the giant says, when a gatekeeper loses, it means death. Death, and then he throws a dagger in quotation marks, and uh, somebody, I believe it was Ichigo, remarks about him throwing a dagger. But it turns out it was his sunbato, which is called Shinzo, and it was uh, strong enough to knock Ichigo and Jidambo straight out of the gate and just completely own their asses. Yeah. Like, also, in the manga, it cuts off his fucking arm. They censored it in the anime. Oh, geez. That makes that makes sense. Oof. Um. But yeah, he. His sword like does this crazy extension thing and then it comes back into its handle, it makes a tape measure retracting sound. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a lot like the uh, snake things that Hazama throws. <laughs> <laughs> just a little, just a little. Oh, God. <laughs> You're turning to dust. Don't worry, there'll oh, be God. another thing like that later that's even more like those. God damn it. Noel Vermillion steps out. Anyways, uh, so. The elder of the Rukon district uh, finds them all lying on their asses in the middle of the city, having just gotten knocked the fuck back. And he welcomes them as Jidambo saviors because, you know, he, they, they didn't let that other guy kill Jidambo, which isn't really what they did, but we're, we're well, running with that. Like, Ichigo, like, jumps in front of Jidambo to block the blade, and they both get knocked out because of that, so I kind of see where they're going. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Or he may goes, I can still heal his wounds. And I'm like, dude, she's fucking dead. What are you doing? Man? Or he's fucking dead. What are you doing, man? Come on. <laughs> but uh, no, he's fine. And uh, or he may heals his wounds. It's uh, okay. Feel. I need to know. Does his arm regrow in the manga? I don't remember. I can check right this second, though. I am also very curious about that. I, I think, I assume it does because there is a thing later on where they mention her being able to cut, to regrow limbs. So it would be weird if it doesn't happen here, but let me look. It'll take a second because there's 750 chapters of Bleach. Oh, is that <laughs> <Yeah>. all? <laughs> you, you, it's hard to pinpoint this. I'm weird. Here, here's the chapter called Amputation. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> ah, yeah. Oh my God. Well, anyway, while he looks into that, Yuichi the cockatiel is here. Cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I did not expect to see him again, right? Uh, Chad's like, wait a second, are you? And then we get a flashback to sepia orange tones of him hanging out as the bird and the ghost. And then it's sunset. And the music here makes me think of Tristan Newcomb's soundtracks for his movies. I hate you. I'm like, I'm losing it. I'm losing <laughs> it because now the bird in my head is just Dobo. <laughs> Stop. Also, I have the answer. Uh, she doesn't regrow. She doesn't regrow it. The townspeople like drag it back and stick it against the wound, and he heals it like that. She heals it like that. Okay. Oof. Yeah, that's a little censored. Yeah, just a little. <laughs> so, so Chad's now walking around with the kid on his shoulders, and I have a stroke because the anime lost track of what the shit it was saying. <laughs> yes, it did kind of just go off into. This is my next note. <laughs> Wait a fucking second. The kid just said that Chad thinks he's heavier than he used to be because he found him, quote, or he knew him, quote, as a parakeet, even though the last scene he just said was a cockatiel, which is what he was. <laughs> oh, no. I completely no. just didn't notice. Yeah, I didn't notice at all. I was like, okay, was okay like, that, uh, was whatever, like, that sounds right. I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? That's a, that's, a, that's a dingable moment if I do say so myself. I feel like if they didn't have him literally say he was a cockatiel in the prior scene, I might have let it go. I might have been like, uh, uh, <laughs> that's not what that bird is, but whatever. But no, the kid says two different types of birds in two different lines within 30 seconds of each other. And I'm like, what? A bit rough. <laughs> anyway, he's, you know, once we get over that stroke, <laughs> uh, you know, Chad's chilling with him. He's talking to Yuichi about living here and how that goes for him. We get to meet, quote, like his big brother, uh, because as it turns out in Rukon, people form families through their meetings, through happenstance, not through genes or birthright or anything like that, you know. It's just who's there for you. 
because you can die at the same time as other people or just end up in the same place in Rukon as other people. Yeah, and there's a line about, yeah, they don't really try and sort this out at all. I died in 1947. He just died. Right. <laughs> the the way Soul Society works is like the most crackheaded Kubo ever gets. <laughs> <laughs> It's the most he got drunk and gave up part of Bleach. <laughs> yes, I love it. Uh, then Yuichi goes, so why are you here? Are you dead? And Chad goes, no, I'm not dead. And then Yuichi goes, so then why are you here? And he goes, I guess I'm wondering about that myself. And it's like, no, Ch Chad, you're here to save Rukia and protect Ishigo. Well, how the fuck did you forget this? You've been here less than a day. <laughs> I, I want to strive to have the energy Chad has at all times. <laughs> Not giving a shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, aggro pretty well delivers on that, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then Chad thinks about his power and he wonders why his pip hand is so strong. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of this scene. So we cut to a meeting. <laughs> uh, th the village elder is there. Uh, and Yoruichi asks if he knows uh, the whereabouts of... And I wrote her name down wrong because I misheard it at first. I wrote Fukakushima, but apparently it's... Uh, what is it? I'm Kukaku. Kukaku Shiba? Yeah, it's Kukaku Shiba. Yeah. Like Doge. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need somebody to make me a Kukaku Doge now. No. <laughs> you know it. Yes. Fire wonks. Prosthetic paw. We're not there yet, but let me just say that character is straight up biking. <laughs> so I yeah. guess I guess Blaze Blues just them borrowing back from Bleach that borrowed from them because Biken's probably older than Bleach. I mean, I mean, Biken was just Biken was just the artist drew uh, Kenshin as mm -hmm. a girl and was like, "Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's hot. Her boobs are unreasonably huge. <laughs> nice. No, oh, that's pretty cool." Uh, when Yoroichi says this, the elder's like, are you sure? Don't tell me that you're planning to go through the wall like that. <gasps> and, then, <clears throat> and then I write in my notes, a boar broke in with a Guilty Gear character. Apparently, this dipshit's name is Ganju. <laughs> <laughs> Ganju, in complete disbelief uh, that Ichigo doesn't know who he is, he goes, you really don't know who I am? I'm Ganju, the self-proclaimed, and then he says, "Number one, the self-proclaimed number one this, the self-proclaimed -pro number one that. And then he goes, I'm also the self-proclaimed number one soul reaper hater of West Rukon. Yeah, the, and the totally the number one racist soul reaper of hater. The number one racist of West Rukon. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ichigo Here's my YouTube channel. By saying, you forgot to add self-proclaimed fool. And then Ganju is upset. I, I wrote a uh -huh. note here. Ganju's crew is stupid. <laughs> they all write their own yeah. wars. I, I, had, I wrote that down because I was like, this is too much. <laughs> uh, so Ganju, how would you describe him visually, Bob? Um, let's see, he, he wears a bandana. Mm -hmm. He's very ripped. <laughs> He's in good shape. Uh, and he wears like an open Hiori or that, something like that. He's laid back. So I would say he has an almost Elvis energy to his uh, chumpery. Yeah, it's he's kind of like a, a weird <laughs> biker <Chumpery>? almost. <laughs> he's yeah. He he reminds me like if you're watching any kind of samurai thing. He's like if like the big bandit leader isn't a villain. Yeah, and is like a more protagonist allied character. Yeah. So uh, Ganju starts fighting Ichigo. Uh, his technique, he uh, causes sinkholes. So when he blocks, uh, when Ichigo blocks his blow, which I can't remember what his exact weapon was. He has like this weird short his, knife. Uh, like yeah. a cut it's sword like a dagger. or something. Mm -hmm. So he, uh, he, he blocks, Ichigo blocks that blow, but then he causes, uh, Ganju causes a sinkhole, shoves Ichigo Zanpakuto in there, right? And then they have to start fist fighting. And it's a uh, very, very, very cool. It's very cool. But then, out of nowhere, a timer goes off that a, one of those dipshits is just wearing as a backpack a giant <laughs> clock, and then they just leave. And as they go to leave, Ganju's uh, boar 
leaps into midair, and then it's a cliffhanger moment. <laughs> and then the episode ends. <laughs> Which means we get another col- Cone Soul Reaper Guide moment. Always yes. the best. <laughs> Where he goes, Sosuke Eisen, do those glasses even have lenses in them? <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, I, I like this a lot. I too was you know, wondering this. It, this ensures that I watch the whole run, even the ending, so that I can get these good bits. Yes. So now we're on to episode 23. Apparently, Ganju's boar has written on the side of it four wheel drive. <laughs> yeah, yes. that's really good. It's insanely good. This, good. This show fucking rules. <laughs> uh,. We get Ichigo coming back inside and uh, talking to Yoruichi and the others, uh, or just talking to the others. And he goes, who exactly is this Kukakushiba we're looking for? Uh, Yoruichi left out a lot of details. Oh, wait, this is Orihime, Chad, and Ishida talking yes, to each other. Yes, yes. Because Orihime just <laughs> starts theorizing on what type of cat Kukakushiba is. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> she assumes he only knows cats. <laughs> So like it it's could like be, could be like this cat or a Dalmatian. Could be a tabby. It could be an American blank. It even could be a Dalmatian. And Chad goes, "A Dalmatian is actually a dog." And then Ishii does really? like, "Well, I think it's going to be samurai like this." So then they workshop a drawing in the sand of what they think it looks like, and it's the dumbest shit in the world. <laughs> or he was like, "I can add Dalmatian dots. Will that help?" I could be a dip show. Will that help? Fill time? Yes, it will. Thank you. This is Orihime when she's at her strongest of insanity. Oh, God. That's... <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so, they're gonna... It's now the next morning. They're gonna head out. Ichigo apparently is intent on sitting around waiting for that Ganju chump to come back and fight him. Somehow forgetting that Rukia is in trouble that he needs to help until Yoruichi scratches the shit out of his face. And then he goes, you're right. (laughs) (laughs) I am an idiot. His face just has giant gashes in it. He's like, I am stupid as hell. Uh, And then we cut to a, a moment where Rukia is sitting in that room. She's been held in so far. And uh, I think it was, uh, is it Renji who informs her at this moment? Yeah. He goes, the execution date is now less than 14 days. The use of Sokiyoku? See, I'm just writing how they pronounced it, but I think different characters pronounce it differently, so right. I, I'm about to just have I, to I got, look I got, this shit up. I got the Bleach wiki up. Let me let me see. But yeah, it's, it's either Sokiyoku. Yeah. Okay, so it's just Sokiyoku? Okay, yeah. this dude in this scene literally says Sokiyoku. Yes, yes, he does. I wrote that down too. <laughs> okay. It, yeah. it has some real how people keep keep people keep pronouncing Ruki's last name differently and it keeps distracting yes. me. Uh, the use of Kuchiki. So- the <laughs> Kuchi Mama. Anyway, <laughs> the use of Sokiyoku yeah. has been approved. We're now moving you to the repentant room. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed. I'm not gonna lie. That's a really, that's a really powerful name for a room, and it's really funny. Anyways, uh, Kukaku Shrine apparently has giant arms sticking out of the ground, holding up the sign for the shrine. It's really fucking crazy. These are giant buff marble arms. Uh, there's also a giant tall chimney that's coming out of the roof, and it's sealed on the top, which is really weird. Then we run up on Agni and Rudra from Devil May Cry 3 who are standing on top of tall pillars. <laughs> yes. They have names. They're stupid. I didn't write them down. <laughs> yeah. But apparently their master is uh, Biken, who is apparently, uh, the, as I write in my notes because I saw her in other promotional material or ending sequence or whatever, quote, that one lady with the giant boobs and crazy hair. Because her hair's doing that, like, she's got wraps on her head and her hair... Sp- Wait a second, I'm now realizing, isn't there, a, isn't there a Rody Kenshin character that just has, like, wraps around his head and then crazy hair sticking out in between? Yeah, that's that's one of the main villains. So, wait, you combine... Yeah, but he, he has them all over his entire body because he has no Yes, hair. yes, whereas she has it on her hair and her arms some of the time. 
also uh also she i don't think she has the prosthetic in the manga i think the anime was like no you can't show an amputee yeah it's it's a little weird i remember coming across that back in the day of like wait she just doesn't have an arm in the manga why, why would they change this but the wooden arm's cool it is cool uh but yeah so so they're introduced to uh kakashiba uh for some reason they assumed she wasn't a woman including orihime uh I well, didn't I mean, or he may saw she was a cat. And that's true. <laughs> uh, I assumed it was a woman because in a prior scene, I swear to God, they referred to her as a she. <laughs> they might have. I don't remember it, but it could have happened. And then we get... Uh, Kakashi was like, this plan, is it dangerous? And then Yoroichi <laughs> goes, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I was like, this is the dumbest shit ever. <laughs> Yeah, isn't it great? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and then as she's now interested because it's probably dangerous, uh, we cut to mm. Rukia being transported with this absolutely unbelievably ridiculous rig where it's four people carrying poles that connect via cables to a collar on her neck and she has a mask over her head like a drape. Dan, you just don't understand how powerful Rukia is. Uh, evidently. To restrain her. <laughs> evidently. <laughs> and then she gets moved to the repentant room where somebody, one of the people who brought her there goes, can you see it there, Rukia? The instruments of your execution. So Kyoku. Raw. And then they undo her binding, which is the coolest shit in the world, because even though they disconnected from the uh, poles, she still had cables coming out. And now they zip up into the back of her head, like because she had, or into the back of the collar, which is cool as hell. I was like, oh, this is, this is cool as shit. Uh, and and then uh, they're starting to leave. The people who transported her there, all the monkish people. And uh, Renji storms back to Rukia because he was with them. He was the main person from the Soul Society. Like, you can tell he was in charge of that procedure, right? He storms back and he goes, Rukia, Ichigo, and the others are storming the Soul Society. And then Rukia goes, ah, in anime faces, so... <laughs> So that's a thing. Uh, now she has hope. We cut back to Kukakushima. Wait, Kukaku Shrine, where Kukakushima is uh, going along with the plan just because Urahara is going along with it. Mm. I now write, shockingly, Ganju is her sibling. Mm. I wrote this sarcastically. <laughs> <laughs> Gasp. <laughs> and then I nearly shit my pants. Do you know why, Bob? Well, why is that, Dan? Because it's the world famous internet memed bleach yelling <laughs> oh, scene. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, is this going to sound exactly like the 15 minute long segment in, in the AMV Hell 3? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was that, they, they only do it once? Weird. <laughs> I was like, yeah, no, this seems yeah, like. I was could... like, really? Only once? In, in my memory, it's like eight cuts long. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I figured this happened at least twice. No, only once. One of them yells, then the other one yells, and Kakashiba just looks between the two. That's it. In AV Hell, it's like looped 14 times. <laughs> it's Brave. insane. Uh <laughs> that that's that's the end of that. Ichigo was shocked to see Gaju was her sibling, is freaking out and yelling and pointing, and Kakashiba goes. You two know each other already? And then we hard cut <gasps> to Aizen, who's talking to Renji. He says, would it be fair to say that you're close to Rukia? And Renji goes, yes. And then he goes, in your personal <laughs> opinion, does Rukia deserve to die? Her crime was serious, but does the punishment fit it? This is possibly the setup of a single individual. And, and Things are brewing. And then the seat there stole the Hazama is. lurking outside, making the most evil face possible. <laughs> <laughs> See, you didn't say outside of what, so I'm confused if he's outside that room or, I don't know, an elementary school. His face is a little concerning, and I don't know which place he's more likely to be found at. Mm. <laughs> oh, God. This next line, I didn't you, see it coming. You're excited, huh? We cut back to uh, Kakashiva's shrine, or Kakaku's shrine. Uh, 
Ganju gets in a fight with Ichigo immediately and starts stomping his nuts in, and he's enjoying that <laughs> way too much. <laughs> it went on for like eight seconds. That went yeah, on that longer long. than the yelling. It did. <laughs> How unfortunate. Um, I then write, you know, Kakashiba uh, is clearly biking. Her pipe gets knocked out of her hand, and then they accidentally snap it in the fight by stepping on it. And then she blows up her entire shrine, getting mad, like scorching the whole thing with crazy energy. And she uh she blames she them power for power geyser. Yeah. It's very cool. And she uh blames them for destroying her house. And uh yeah, Ishida let's see. Oh, that then after this situation has resolved itself by Ichigo, your your sister's a real piece of work and Ganji goes, Yeah, I know. Uh, they're gonna work together. So now we cut to them in an underground hallway for the best conversation in Bleach to date. <laughs> oh, God. Ishida's like, how do you keep the lighting so strong down here? Like, it's so bright. And then she goes, oh, I use these uh, firefly vines. You know, they're all throughout the ceiling and stuff. And he goes, oh, we don't have those you know, on Earth. Is that a thing here in the Soul Society? And she just ignores him. And then she goes, we're here. And he goes, hey! <laughs> and everyone just ignores him and ignores that she blew him off. And I love that. I love that treatment of lore. You know, though, we didn't talk about in episode 21 this child with a, a full-grown man's head <laughs> on did. his body. Oh and I think God. that's a real shame. That dude's head, that child is like eight years old and his head is like that of a 25-year-old man. <sighs> I've just been staring at it so long I got used to it. <laughs> right. It's it's uh, rough, man. I was like, this Rukon is how district's hard. This is how children look. Yep. <laughs> <sighs> anyway. So we get to that room. Ishida gets ignored. And in that room is a giant launcher that apparently will get them to Serete. <laughs> now for this episode ends with yet another to be continued. And so, as such, we get our cone soul reaper moment. Oh wait! Ah, before that, uh huh. Um, it ends on oh, her whole thing. Kikakushiba is she's a fireworks expert, so it's nothing like super crazy fight or anything. She does fireworks. I thought that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'd actually missed that. Um, so I wasn't paying attention during the cone segment, but I had a stroke. <laughs> because I had to deal with something at that exact moment. Uh, Cone said, she's so sweet, she could be my sister. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I don't remember which uh, which captain he was talking about, but it, Jesus Christ. It was Lieutenant Momo something. Let me okay. <laughs> Momo. Okay. Momo Hinamori. As we spend Oh yeah, she's funny for reasons that we'll find out later. The more, the more time we spend in the Soul Society, the more I'm like, man, Kubo just loves drawing a shitload of characters. He's just like, here we yeah. go. Oh, you have seen it's nothing setting yet. yet. <laughs> He's like, we'll justify all these drawings I make if I die. <laughs> if I die trying, I will make sure that. Um, so that's the end of episode 23, 24. Uh, it opens with them screaming, the air. <laughs> Because they realize they're going to travel through this giant launcher to launch them into Serete. Uh, she is now going to prepare the uh, cannon for this procedure. So she tells Agni and Rudra, whose names I still haven't written down, to turn a crank in order to raise the cannon up out of the ground and into the yard outside of her uh, shrine. Here I thought it was going to come out of the chimney. That was foolish of me. The ship just explodes. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. It just falls apart and it's under it. <laughs> it's so weird. Um, so one thing I wrote down, this is a me problem for sure, but it bugs me. The pump, the crank thing that they're both operating is designed wrong because you would want one side to be down while the other side was up so they could both just push. Instead, they're both oriented the same way, so they're both just straining their backs while pulling half of the time and I'm like why Why is this design like this anyways and then on top of that the chimney thing happened where it was just like I thought the chimney was the cannon so this this sequence has a bit of a like I'm just having issues dealing with it but uh you know it crashes up out of the ground it's settled now everything's everything's just there and uh 
we have we have these devices to help us get into Serete. It's a uh, it's some sort of spirit core that they need to focus their energy into to create an, a spirit energy shield around themselves so they can make it through the barrier. <sighs> Most of this episode is going to be Ichigo trying to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, it has some... It, uh, imagine the scene from the, the first Raimi Spider-Man where he tries to make his web work, but it's an episode. Yep. I'm trying to figure out what of this I actually want to talk about because I think that does a pretty good job of summarizing it. Yeah. Uh, I don't even think there's any, like, detours. It's just all that. Yeah, there's one tiny detour. Uh, Renji is heading to some sort of meeting. He's wearing a lieutenant badge, and he says, you know, it's the first time I've ever had to wear my lieutenant badge like this. Dear, 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 dear. Yeah, it lets him introduce a ton of characters because they're all the lieutenants. <laughs> yeah, so then he <laughs> yeah. ends up in a room with another lieutenant and then a uh, blonde-haired, big-chested lieutenant is introduced as well, and she says her captain is missing. And they're like, mm, mysterious. Uh, yeah. That's, 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 I think that's it. Because um, we immediately from that cut back to uh, Agni and Rudra yelling how Ichigo's stupid and he can't put his spirit energy in the ball and he's stupid and it's funny that it's stupid. I wrote down, Ichigo's bad at it. They yell at him that he's bad at it. It's funny. <laughs> it is funny. There's a scene where uh, everyone but Ichigo's gonna go get food and Orihime's like, I'm not hungry and then her stomach betrays her by growling and then she starts beating the shit out of it. Yeah. <laughs> she is a crackhead. That's still, but that's better. That's the for the best. Uh, crackhead. Ganju sort of sticks around to talk to Ichigo. Uh, and Ichigo explains why they're going to say right day. He says, I don't want to be the kind of deplorable guy who turn us back on Rukia. And then that that makes a connection. Emotionally. Yeah, we get to hear a little bit of Ganju's backstory and stuff too as his brother. We haven't hit that yet. Oh, no. That's 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 a little bit from now, yeah. <laughs> uh, Gaudry says, imagine a dark circle. Dive deep and go deeper. Deeper. You're now in darkness. You have... <laughs> no. Ease. I was thinking isolation 119. You're falling. Falling through darkness. <laughs> uh, so that he can ma master his uh, spirit energy inside of the dark circle in his mind. Uh, yep, we get another scene of Orihime faking being full. Uh, this is when she actually punches her stomach. Earlier, she just yells and pretends it's not, uh, Orihime's, as, uh, KZ said a second ago, very crack-headed. Uh, Ichigo apparently off-screen starts figuring it out because the whole house starts shaking and everything's crazy and his wicked huge amount of power is out of control. Oh. And then, uh, Kakashiba says, concentrate your energy, dipshit, and then it's fine. And and then he gets distracted by Orihime congratulating him, and then the sphere cracks and uh, it explodes, and he, yeah, he blows is owned. up. Yeah, and it's funny because he Kukaku blows up. Goes, I told you, idiot, that if you didn't do it right, you'd blow up. And he just yep. goes, Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Then we cut to the captain meeting. So captains are meeting. Kubo draws a lot of people. Uh, they're <laughs> yeah, like, he does. They're like a ton of captains. Apparently, uh, Squad 13's captain is absent. Probably, mm -hmm. I don't remember which one that one. Which one that one is? Uh, one of these motherfuckers has a sideways boomerang head, and it's stupid as hell. And he has teeth at all times, and he's like doing a half, <laughs> yes! half Skeletor impersonation. And I love it. Yeah, <laughs> that guy's what, wrong. What's wrong? <laughs> he's wonderful. You can tell that voice Maybe actor's like, can. I can't use any t any lips. It needs to be all <laughs> teeth when I read. <laughs> Just don't do that. Mm, yes, part of that voice. Just do the teeth. <laughs> Uh, everyone starts shit talking each other and bickering and whatnot, and then uh, they get a signal. They're like, "What?" Yeah, there's the part where they're like, "I sure hope none of us are a traitor who let invaders live." <laughs> cutting to <laughs> cutting to Gein, Azama. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just losing it over that. I literally wrote, "Hazama is killing me right now." <laughs> He's like, are you implying that I'm a traitor? Mm. Oh, jeez, they lived weird. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been an accident. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> we <c> <laughs> These notes start 
<laughs> you, you okay? <laughs> My notes are just killing me right now because uh, it, uh, I have a line that says Hazama is killing me. The next line, quote, Ichigo, end quote, hyphen Rukia. <laughs> <laughs> we Why? cut to Rukia and all she says is Ichigo. And then we say to be continued. <laughs> yes. Which means we once again hit the Cone Soul Reaper segment. Oh, this is the best. Where he doesn't even want to talk about the captain with the finger up his nose. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I couldn't believe he was even put in here yet. <laughs> I think Bleach has a very crackheaded energy. <laughs> yes, for the best. Uh... <laughs> The beginning of this episode is the end of the last episode, and I yeah, wrote down they completely his, redo it. History is repeating. This must be the work of an enemy. Stand the bite, the dice. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Bleach is in your eye. So Ichigo passed out at the end of the last episode, or at the beginning of this episode. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Uh, after the explosion happened he just lost all energy and just passed out yoruichi goes to leave we now cut to ichigo going outside they're going to launch themselves and when he sees yoruichi he goes what happened to your tail yoruichi yoruichi is furious because apparently ichigo grabbed it in his sleep and completely broke his tail in like three places <laughs> and orhima won't heal it for whatever reason orhima is a That's sick puppy up. like that <laughs> She's like, hurt cats are cute. <laughs> <laughs> My powers don't work on cats, I swear. Could you imagine she said that literally? She's like, I don't think it works on cats. And he's like, please try. And she's like, no. <laughs> that would be fucking insane. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty much the only way or he may could come off as more insane this season. <laughs> <laughs> or he may I'm dying. Good. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> she has Zelda's face from the CDI game too. Uh, yeah, but one eye is like twice as big as the other one. <laughs> Please draw that somebody. <laughs> uh we then uh, show Ganju. He joins the conversation. He has a completely new outfit. He calls it the custom battle costume. And Ichigo can't have one. And then Ichigo's like, you look like an idiot. And then Ganju explains, his brother was murdered by a soul reaper. And for some reason, his brother thanked him. <gasps> Why? Also, his brother was a prodigy. He apparently did five years of Soul Reaper Academy in one year. Very cool. Yeah. Ganju doesn't also understand any of this, and he's very mad, and he wants answers. Also, when he's when he's talking about who killed his brother, they show us they show a silhouette of Rookie. I'm sure that isn't important at all. No, no, no probably probably it's a coincidence. No, that's <laughs> there's no fucking way, man. It's probably Orihime. <laughs> <laughs> that bitch. He's like, please, Orihime, heal me. And she's like, no. <laughs> she's like, thank you. <laughs> Uh, Yoruichi reveals he's never done the cannonball thing before, but he's so good at it, you know, using the spirit core to make a bubble. Mm -hmm. He's he's amazingly good. And Ichigo is crushed by this, and he goes, oh, don't be crushed, Ichigo. You would be surprised at all the things I'm amazing at that you suck shit at. <laughs> yeah. God, I love Derek <laughs> Stephen Prince. He yes. delivered that line perfectly. <laughs> This is really, really good. So they're inside of the uh, chimney-like cannon, and Kakashiba is lighting her arm on fire to light a circle around the cannon and then slams her fist down. It's very cool. Um, my next note, this shit's a wonk <laughs> Because the spirit, yes, it is. <laughs> the spirit sphere f gets launched into the atmosphere and then just starts going sideways abruptly. And I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> yes, it's kind of out there. <laughs> like at any moment, fucking Godry's gonna just turn towards Ichigo and he goes, you know what happened to the Soul Reaper who got everything he ever wanted? <laughs> so apparently the way this thing works is they need mm -hmm. to balance their spirit and energy, otherwise they'll fuck up and not work right. <laughs> Who the fuck put Ichigo in this thing? 
<laughs> also, what the fuck is with the, this springing the news of how this vehicle works while they're flying through the air at huge speeds? Look. Ridiculously and, and apparent, high misspelled speeds. We, we didn't need and another episode of the complexation, okay? No, that's true. If the smallest thing goes wrong, everyone dies. Did Tesla make this ball? <laughs> <laughs> so, Kimpachi runs off from the meeting, because we're, we're now focusing on that. Uh, mm, yeah, because everyone the the alarm goes off because they can tell something's happening. Yes, the alarm mm. goes off. There, you know, that was the end of the last episode. Now Kipiachi is running off from the meeting. A pink-haired girl shows up and says, "And I swear to God, Daddy, wait up!" and asks if if he's off again to kill people. Oh no, it was uh, Kenny. Yeah. Okay, I was yeah. like, I was like, it wasn't Daddy. I I'm this. losing it. What the fuck? <laughs> um, she's tiny. He's huge. She's got pink hair. Um, and then he explains, yeah, we're, we're going to fight a strong person. That's what I'm going to do. And then his, uh, <laughs> I start to wonder because the Zava's on screen. When is Zava's going to ask them if they want to know how he got his scars? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next line is, I can't believe Ichimaru might be behind everything or something. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> we now cut back to the walk Vader where uh, Stop it. they immediately say that it's 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 made clear through their conversation that they were only able to get through that barrier into Sarete because of Ichigo's immense strength. And then I write that why does this thing already exist? What did it do before this? Look, before they were shot fireworks, I guess, was a guy in them for no reason. <laughs> okay. And then they blew themselves up in the atmosphere. That's, I don't know why. It's pretty tight. <laughs> <laughs> you need to do something to get kicks in yeah. Rukon District. You gotta you get your kicks somehow. Um, let's see. There's So they start breaking through the barrier. Uh, everyone's staring at it. They're freaking out. Uh, th then, after they get through, the most bullshit, contrived, fucking anime-ass thing occurs. <laughs> they broke through, and that caused the sphere to shatter, which now causes a whirlpool to appear in midair, and they have to swim together, because if they get separated, they'll all fly into all sorts of different directions. So they start trying to swim through midair, they're trying to get towards each other, uh, Chad sees Ishida floating away from Orihime, so he separates himself intentionally to toss uh, Ishida back to Orihime, and then Chad falls down below to the city, and Yoroichi, uh, I believe it was Yoroichi, uh, but it may have been Ganju, explains that, like, oh, no, 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 it was Yoroichi. He explains, oh, yeah, Chad, Chad will probably survive, but we have to stay together or we'll die. <laughs> So they Very try durable. to they try to swim closer and closer together, and right as they're about to touch hands, boom! Explosion! They fly in four different directions. It's like they're fucking Dragon Balls being separated after a wish, all because they didn't touch hands. They weren't close enough because they weren't grabbing butts, uh, apparently, and, and because I misheard. Because I misheard his name earlier, my note says, and I'm just gonna read it. No need to edit my notes now. Murder Daddy, what? <laughs> Find out which <laughs> of the four Dragon Balls is Ichigo so he can have fun with the strong one. The Murder Daddy of Squad 11. <laughs> yeah, that, that, I mean, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> yeah, it's not actually wrong. <laughs> oh my god. Um. So yeah, no, um... <laughs> The episode ends right there to be continued. We get our next time on Bleach segment delivered by, by Reggie, who who's bobbing around like he's Rahab in a Patreon bumper oh, at the end of a video. <laughs> and he goes, roar my zombie Maru, slice up that rat. <laughs> then the zombie Maru just spins. <laughs> it looks yes. so unreal. <laughs> um, it's something you would do. Yeah, no, it's really good. It's really delightful. I appreciate it a lot. And gentlemen, that is the end of this run of Bleach episodes. Whew. We successfully synopsized Bleach. A lot of good stuff happened. These. Yeah. A lot of setup. Yeah, Ooh, no. Boy. It, it is a lot of good stuff. There really wasn't that much filler. It was like you you almost got a little bit of filler when Ganju shows up to be a punk for no reason, almost completely unprovoked. 
<laughs> and then you get a little bit of filler when Ichigo tries to figure out the spirit core. But we're still moving along at a fast pace and introducing a lot of characters and ideas. So pretty, pretty solid in that respect. All right. So now we got to move on to my favorite segment. Who's best dressed in this five set of Bleach episodes? Um, let's see. I'll start with Dan. Uh, I'm going to have to say Ganju's custom battle uh, 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 costume. That is really good. I got to say. I think it's really solid. He went from a guy whose design I didn't love to someone who I think would look really cool in a fighting game. <laughs> yeah, he shows up in that Bleach uh, DS game. And oh, cool. oh, that's cool. Maybe we should check that out sometime. <laughs> Uh, feel. Uh, the guy with a clock backpack, because sometimes you have to be brave. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Very true. God, could you imagine you're the guy in your friend's group who has to wear a clock all day? <laughs> yes, and it's not even, like, yes. subtle. It's a gigantic, like, you put it on a wall. <laughs> it's rough, man. Timekeeping. Uh, I guess I'll go next. I'm going to go ahead and nominate uh, Kukaku Shiba. I think that that's a really cool outfit. The robot wooden arm thing is neat. And uh, she looks like uh, a, a guilty gear character. Yes. Uh, KZ, who you got? Uh, thankfully, they introduced 8 million characters in this set. So I was given a lot more options than usual. I'm going to pick uh, Kyoraku, which was one of the captains. He wore the straw hat and the uh, pink, like... Uh, kimono thing oh geez yeah he's Vi <laughs> violating dress code uh, he's he's got a good fit i approve of it ah oh, geez uh sideways boomerang head not doing it for you i felt oh, that's second place <laughs> i felt like it'd be cheating to choose any of them i was like no that's like no characters. i'm like I'll, I'll take what i can get <laughs> right? that was another case of we're recording in 10 minutes oh shit again i did not look up ah fuck it him <laughs> so the funniest thing is I, I i didn't think of like oh choose a captain or whatever um so as you're asking casey i was like is he gonna pick the child with the huge head <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> he's not very well dressed. He what are you talking about, like a, a dude? Point. He's wearing a really, really good uh, mask for Halloween. <laughs> I, 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 just his head. Like, I could have just said uh, Eisen. He has glasses with no lenses. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what anime had that scene of the chick holding up her finger to her glasses and then just pulling down her oh, finger and it goes through. Is it fully cooling? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Gotcha. I was like, I'm pretty sure it's fully coolly, but I don't know. The first time Isis shows up, Dan's just like, it's a weird mix of me and you. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> Isis is just a weird mix of me and Bob. Oh, oh my god. It's kind of it killed me. It's kind of raw. It, it's like if you two fused and were voiced by Kyle A. Bear. <laughs> <laughs> Even the heart of battle. <laughs> where where he voices both Aizen and Ganju. <laughs> I feel like Ganju is what you'd expect from him. Yes. Aizen is not. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yes. All right. This is the first time we're going to be doing this segment now that we've all seen the movie. I'm honestly <laughs> yeah. like, should we even do it anymore? I feel like it's we more on conclusion. <laughs> I think we we should. <sighs> Dan. Yeah. Is this better than the live action? Yeah, no movie? shit. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> One might say upward of four times is good. But uh, we'll have out. to see when we rate when we do ratings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this sec this segment's now just like, yeah, no, we've all seen it. It's bad. <laughs> so KZ, can you do math? <laughs> like, <laughs> in the future, now when you when you get rid of that bit. Whenever we have what we think is a really bad set, you have to bring it back. <laughs> Uh, okay, Field, do you have a piece of insane trivia for me? Okay, is this true or false? Ichigo and Ganju are related. <sighs> KZ. Um, uh, yes? Dan. No, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> Bob. <laughs> yes. I'm not telling you what the answer is because that would be a spoiler, but I will bring it up when we find out. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck 
you. <laughs> we have a weird nested trivia section this week. You see, this is the problem because also it's been a bit since, you know, I've jumped into the world of Bleach. <laughs> so you, yeah, so you don't know if this is some weird so, thing so that was, was like, only revealed this, this sounds in a book. like it could be wrong and correct at the same time, so I can't say I'm too sure. <laughs> There's so many ways it could be true, even though it's stupid. <laughs> it sure is. Good, stupid. that's why it's cool. Oh, okay. Thank you, Feel, for um not enlightening us this week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for shooting Dan. Um now it's time for the, the end. Everyone has to rate how tight this was. Mm. KZ, how tight were these episodes? <sighs> this is pretty tight. Um we we get a zero to twenty five each for us, and uh, I'm gonna go pretty high on this. I really enjoyed. There, there's a decent amount of comedy here. The action was good. The intrigue setting in. We're we're really getting into this uh, this really good arc. I'm gonna say it's my. I'm gonna give it a twenty two. Yeah, I'll, I'll not twenty one. I'm just gonna do twenty one. Okay, I was gonna say that was your highest score yet. If it was twenty two, yeah, I was like, I was like, is it highest? I'm like, no, no, I don't think it beats that that one Menos Grande bit. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 was... that part's crackheaded and makes me laugh. So I'm gonna give this a uh, a twenty one. I'll just have it tie. All right, zero to twenty five. Mm -hmm. Feel. What do you got? Uh, I'm gonna give this a seventeen. It was pretty good, but it was drugged down by the filler of Ichigo's got to figure out the ball. <laughs> So it's a so it's a little bit lower because of that, but the the two episodes on each side of the that one was pretty good. All right, Dan, what do you got for how tight this is? Well, it could have used more Grand Fisher. Yes, <laughs> but <laughs> we might have to okay, wait. You're right. You're right. Changing mine, it gets a nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is some of the best stuff we've seen so far. Um, I I think it's going to come in basically tied with some of the best and worst so far so weirdly enough in the only show on our podcast network i've ever done this i'm giving it the same score i've done three other times of a 20 jeez yeah it's, it's <laughs> oh been God. very consistent yeah i have a different reason every time you know sometimes it's the animation's really dog shit for an episode or like we have a whole scene where people who look nothing like our main cast are talking <gasps> kind of fucked up that uh we've done Six episodes so far, and two thirds of them you've scored it the same. <laughs> yeah, no, this isn't intentional. It's just every time we come through, I feel like that. Like the Menos, uh, the Menos Grande thing, I feel was really fucking cool, but it was kind of counteracting a little bit of slowness there. Mm -hmm. This, it doesn't have a Menos Grande moment, but there's some really cool shit in here. With the, the you know, moment, I'm, ju I'm just thinking of Ichigo's plan on how he was going to defeat the Menos Grande, which I think is a 100 out of 10. <laughs> yes, yeah, just really spice is. him up like a fucking sausage. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to slice him up and stick him in my mac and cheese. <laughs> I, I mean, this had a good moment, too, of, oh, man, Ichigo's balls got crushed. <laughs> No. I, I really enjoy the Orihime uh, making up what Kakushiba is going to look like. I enjoyed that. I enjoy her pummeling her stomach. I enjoy um, <laughs> I enjoy Ichigo crippling Yoro Ichi in his sleep. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, there's some really strong stuff in here. It doesn't have that standout moment like you were saying, but there's still really good episodes. I'm going to I'm going to give it a 19. Okay. I think I'm comfortable with that. It wasn't quite as good as the last set, but it's some really strong stuff here. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's going to be it. We got we got the scores in. Wow. Wow. Are, are, are you... Look, wow. Mm, the, mm, this how, seems like it this might score. be about 10 times better than the movie. <laughs> what? No way. Uh, yeah. Uh, l let's look here. Uh, here are our scores. Uh, for the first five episodes, 64. Then 6 through 10 gets a 79. Then 11 through 15 gets a 79. 16 through 20. It's our biggest yet. 81. Then the live action movie got an 8. And then <laughs> the, this set got a 75, beating the live action movie by 67 points. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty close. We've recovered. <laughs> so, Dan, how, how excited are you to watch more Bleach? Well, incredibly, because, you know, we had that one scene where Rukia went, Ichigo. Uh. <laughs> 
to be continued. <laughs> We we'll get to see more of these concerts. Also, you got to see those cables retracted to her collar. Who's to say they won't come back out and do crazy shit? You never know. Also, it's like what's the up operation with- scene in Spider Man Two. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was no. that is actually what I was thinking about. <laughs> I was like, the tentacles just start attacking your teammates. <laughs> um, and you also have Murder Day. <laughs> So yeah, murder I'm, daddy's real good I'm yes. pretty excited for these uh, upcoming episodes honestly some of the best I think we've hit in a while and uh, Spaceman Spiff told me on the down low uh, yeah you're about to hit the really good stuff there's a lot of potential in the next set in particular because we're getting a new opening and a new ending oh yeah yeah it's always exciting especially once mm-hmm. we're past that first ending <laughs> <laughs> we have been we're, we're, we're hitting ending three yeah it's, it's crazy well that that's it we'll see you next month for more bleach <laughs> Jesus Christ <laughs> bye everyone <laughs> this month's Gigaboots videos were brought to you by our lordly executive producers Esme E. Lee Broyles Star Falcon Spaceman Spiff Danny Richardson Red Blaze 27, Third Birthday Win, and Anna Macarena. Thank you very much to our executive producers. And also these guys. Soar on over to patreon.com slash gigboots and become an executive producer today.